in the second episode of the vedic meditation series swamini satyavratananda ji will take us to the first step of meditation chitta shanti dhyanam to relax the body breath and mind before that she also explains the common obstacles that can arise in meditation and how to counter them we talk about the duration timing and process of this practice this is a detailed overview and i hope this benefits your meditation journey namaskar swamini ji namaskar thank you for taking the time again so in this session we will start with the first type of vedic meditation as i understand the chit shanti dhyanam or the, the first part towards yeah uh, uh, before going to that i have some more points to talk Ji. about that, introduction of that meditation Ji. after completing that uh, i have to discuss about the obstacles in meditation also Ji. then only i'll come back to that first meditation Ji. last time i was uh, talking about uh, the object of meditation the object of meditation must be a meaningful object hmm. our shastra prescribes uh, when you meditate upon in front of some object it must be some powerful omniscient omnipotent that which can help you more that object of meditation it is uh, very very significant according to our shastra because we the human beings always want to share our pains or sufferings whatever we have inside either with mother or father or brother or guru friend like that any other human being but when we want to share like that unfortunately the worldly people also bound to have certain limitations no human being can be omniscient even though mother is so close to us father is so close to us brother guru etc in spite of that a person is not capable of withstand other person's pain completely therefore human being seek such a power which can withstand and uh, as i can share with that uh, altar in front of me i can have full hope that god will save me protect me that type of uh, leaning of the mind upon something is quite common very natural that is why we prescribe the pratima the form of the lord different uh, names are there different forms are there so one god we see different forms ishta devata whatever we can take we can take that is uh, our contention then this uh, pratika upasana pratima upasanam i said that um, murti or form but when we talk about uh, uh, pratikam also a symbol is also recommended if not pratima symbol of that lord shivalinga represents uh, shiva saligrama represents vishnu devi flame represents devi like that uh, any symbol also we can take that is called pratika upasanam but initially we recommend only pratima upasanam later if we want we can take pratika or chinnam or symbol meditation or we can take um, that uh, symbol can be omkara also is recommended this is one type of meditation object of meditation pratima or pratikam therefore human being easily relate to bhagavan this is our scriptural injunction for us so pratima and pratika upasanam i said 
then later that uh, upasana means also meaning also have given we never worship idols idol means uh, pratima can be a, a photo or it can be an um, metal um, bronze or um, gold or any form that can be metal idol also we are not worshiping idols we are worshiping ideal behind that idol many people think vigraha aradhana idol worship is blind it's not blind it is called atasmin tad buddhi even though in that paper photo god is not there but i invoke the lord all pervading god in that photo even though my mother is not there in that photo but i respect that photo because my mother picture is there <coughs> or my father picture is there i respect my father it does not mean my father it has to be there in that photo like that any idol of any guru or any swami or any uh, great person we don't worship that idol or any metal or stone in behind the stone atasmin even though that person is not there that form we invoke hmm. atasmin like uh, haridra kumkumam we say manjal that is called turmeric powder we look at it as uh, ganapati ganapati cannot be the turmeric powder but atasmin even though ganapati is not there atasmin when it is not there but tad buddhi ganapati buddhi like that this is called uh, very very intelligently designed atasmin tad buddhi therefore with the uh, hindus especially we never worship uh, idols ideal behind the idol this is called upasana atasmin tad buddhi we have to understand this very carefully then this uh, upasana meditation also how it should be patanjali said vijatiya pratyaya anantarita sajatiya pratyaya pravahaha meditation means manasa vyaparah it is a mental activity manasa vyaparah manasa vyapara in the form of thought so thought means pratyaya vijatiya pratyaya means uh, other thoughts vijatiya means other thoughts pratyaya thoughts anantarita without without going to other thoughts if you are object of meditation is suppose rama shri lord rama uh, you are keeping you have to think about only rama that is sajatiya pratyaya same thought similar thought we have to continue krishna thought if you want to continue about krishna you can continuously think that is called vijatiya pratyaya anantarita sajatiya pratyaya pravahaha it is a flow flow of thought this is what yoga shastra definition even uh, vidyaranya swami also encourages this type of definition everybody accept in our parampara vijatiya pratyaya anantarati sajatiya pratyaya pravahaha dhyanam it is a flow of thought same flow similar thought hmm. for that a sadhaka dhyata has to meditate upon dheya vastu for a length of time this is about pratyaya pravahaha then now i have given what is pratikam and what is pratima and what is atasmin tad buddhi why we have to select a photo or any idol what purpose because human being relate with another almighty all powerful bhagavan so bhagavan alone can uh, take care of you ultimately this is the uh, conviction next point about uh, food also plays a important role a person who want to practice meditation there are three types of food sattvic food rajasic food and tamasic food 
a person who eat tamasic food a person become lazy and his mind is not fit enough for meditation practice what is uh, tamasic food uh, a non vegetarian all this type of food is prohibited in our shastra in patanjali first yama is ahimsa non violence not hurting any animals any birds or any insects so ahimsa is the first step of uh, patanjali that itself shows one has to be vegetarian a yoga practitioner must be pure vegetarian pure vegetarian comes under sattvic food that influences the mind in chandogya upanishad also it is said how sattvic food influence the mind to make the mind sattvic that sattvic mind is possible only through sattvic food what is sattvic food lord krishna said in 17th chapter what is rajasic food that which makes you so you no know, passion and a lot of anger and restlessness a lot of stress and strain comes because of rajasic food katva amla lavana tyushna tishna lot of spicy food lot of pungent stringent food all will influence the mind such a mind anxious mind cannot sit for meditation tamasic mind also not fit for meditation only sattvic mind for that sattvic food is recommended for every meditator so next comes what are the obstacles of uh, um, meditation when we are practicing meditation the obstacles comes in three ways um godapada acharya tells this in um, godapada karika mandukya upanishad beautiful shloka he says lai sambodhaye chittam vikshiptam shamaye punah sakashayam vijaniya samapraptam na chanai three types of obstacles he pointed out there how one has to come out of that also the meditator has to take care of that first he said laye the first problem is in meditation sleep comes once you sit without any thoughts for some time very nice calm and quiet normally sleep comes laye it is called what god father chere say sambodhaye wake up your mind if it goes to sleep sleep comes but you should not go along with that you must be alert sambodhaye wake up yourself suppose it goes to an um, that uh, sleep position sambodhaye chittam that's why lord krishna said samankaya siro grivam if you sit straight sleep will not come if you sit like this slowly you sleep and slowly it shrink body shrinks sleep comes very much because blood circulation to the brain is very less if you don't sit straight that's why samankaya siro grivam neck head and spine must be in one line dharayan nachalam sthira you have to focus your mind with that position asana position also prescribed then this laya how to why laya comes sleep comes it is not said in gaudapada karika but it is said in other places because of too much eating sleeping comes the sleep is because of too much eating a meditator should not eat too much this is one remedy to avoid sleep again second reason for sleep why we get sleep because of uh, um, nidra sesham we call it as nidra sesham means uh, you have not slept in the night yesterday properly therefore you require some more sleep then meditation is the ideal time it chooses okay let me sleep now so a meditator has to sleep properly 
people used to get up early morning 3 o'clock and start doing meditation hmm. slept at 11 o'clock and waking up at 3 o'clock is not ideal the person needs sufficient sleep when you feel fresh you have to wake up for that you have to go early to bed early to rise these are all disciplines are um, um, they are involved in that hmm. therefore we have to sleep sufficiently then you can avoid sleep in the meditation otherwise sleep comes this is one second reason first reason is overeating because of that sleep comes in meditation second reason is um, lack of uh, good sleep in the night therefore sleep comes in the meditation this is second reason for that what you have to do sleep well then third problem for laya is uh, overwork people are workaholic a meditator should not do too much hard work too much physical strain is there that body cannot be fit for meditation if a person want to lot of money lot of uh, um, plans are there and working here and there and going office so much of work is there such a mind is uh, not uh, available for meditation therefore our shastra says if you want to do meditation reduce be content be content trupti a santosha patanjali said in nemas shaucha santosha santosha means not happiness santosha means contentment one must have contentment towards earning what they are earning what they are possessing if the contentment is not there towards possessions and uh, other earning and all there is no end for that so person is rushing for that too much work workaholic person hmm. cannot do meditation be content and reduce your hyper activity in the world too much activity keep some time for your sadhana so that is another reason also for laya a body is physically so tired meditation normally sleep comes therefore these are the three reasons overeating lack of sleep and heavy hard work physical work these three can be rectified by uh, three techniques three remedies less eating good sleep and contentment this one word gaurapada jara said laye sambodhaye chittam over but these are all not given in that shloka <laughs> this is our job to extract then second obstacle vikshiptam shamayet punaha vikshiptam as you sit in meditation mind goes here and there vikshiptam distractions bound to be there they will come but again vikshiptam manaha shamayet may you calm down again and again punaha means again and again vikshiptam shamayet punaha so this is another obstacle in the meditation distraction vacillation that we can bring back again and again by shama means mind control bringing back the mind again to the same thought similar thought this is second obstacle we can rectify then third obstacle sakashayam vijaniyat sakashayam kashayam means when a person start doing meditation there is a type of uh, uh, addiction towards meditation it's very nice calm i am enjoying and they love to continue more and more time in the meditation and uh, they don't like any sounds or people talking the people who practice meditation they develop i saw many people like that they come to me with so many complaints like this one lady used to do like that only meditation teacher and she started doing meditation and uh, continuously deeply she started doing and she started uh, getting aversion towards husband and children also that type of tendency developed 
for everything irritation in the family so the disturbance started in the family because of this meditation she is not able to stop also and the disturbance is coming in the family children and husband what to do and she was uh, uh, thinking what to do one day she asked me and how she is doing meditation like that uh, they get addiction to that this is called rasa swada mind becomes you know, so calm and quiet rasa aswada means enjoying that calmness so people do not know that and they develop a lot of aversion towards the world some people not all people but there is a possibility of that lot of people a lot of people will get that problem also they are not able to come out of that because of the disturbance in the family or surroundings they stop meditation totally that is also happening because so much disturbance is coming nobody is liking me to do meditation i am not able to sit who asked you to sit in so many hours when you are having some responsibilities you have to decide how much time you have to do meditation that is why guidance is required with this guidance sakashayam vijaniyat may you know that rasa swada that kashayam when you look into that meditation practicing you will be addicted to that what is the purpose of meditation what for you are doing calmness peace of mind only you are doing that is not the purpose of mind purpose of meditation mind has to go into deep relaxation that is not the purpose of meditation people without knowing practicing meditation for what purpose they are doing thinking that ananda they get ananda in that uh, uh, deep uh, meditation for a few days few months that ananda is the culmination that ananda is the ultimate purpose of goal of meditation they think that is not true that ananda what you are getting in meditation is not the ultimate goal of meditation that everyone should know who are practicing meditation therefore that ananda is a by product calmness is a by product manashanti is a by product but don't take that is the ultimate purpose of meditation therefore these all three obstacles laye sambodhaye chittam vikshiptam shamaye punaha sakashayam vijaniyat may you know that that addiction that ananda never uh, never carried away yourself towards that ananda and let me do for some more time let me do some more time and they become totally indifferent with the society and family i have seen all these types that's why i have to uh, give some advice to the meditators there are unknown uh, issues will arise and that lady who i said the teacher she started getting irritation on his her body as the scorpions are biting on her that type of uh, feelings are started in her mind hmm. these are all unhealthy certain um, symptoms appear if you don't have proper guidance this is uh, these are the about obstacles pratibandha vignas we call it them pratibandhas obstacles in meditation sakashayam vijaniya what to do samapraptam na chalayet when it comes to balance samam synchronization your breathing your body your mind when they synchronize mind is so calm and quiet samapraptam na chalayet may you not allow the mind to go again into the worldly objects so these are all given in our shastra then we will come to um, this uh, chitta shanti dhyana you have any questions ji swamini ji a couple of questions uh one is related to pratikam or chinnam which you mentioned uh is there anything in particular 
which we should look at? Should it be visual? Can it be audio as well? What sort of pratikam or chinnam is the best one or is the recommended one? Yeah, I told already that the shivalinga. If you are a Shiva Bhakta, you can keep Shivalinga. It represents a Shiva. If you are a Vishnu Bhakta, you can keep Salagrama. It is a type of a stone. Thinking that uh, Salagrama is a Vishnu. Hmm. Even though that stone is uh, as a stone in front of you, but you Atasmin Tadbuddhi, Vishnu Buddhi. Or flame, if you are a Devi Bhakta, you can keep a flame in front of you. That Jyoti Swarupini, that Shakti Rupini, you can imagine. Opening eyes, no. You have to see that object and close and mentally visualize that object. Hmm. Not opening eyes. Closing eyes only. You have to visualize. First you keep it, look at it for a few minutes. Again your mind gets a diversion. Again open your eyes and look at it and close your eyes. So mentally you visualize that object continuously. So there are a lot of symbols. And Omkara is the other symbol. We can look at the Omkara and meditate upon that. Omkara represents Vishwara. These are all symbols. And so one of the obstacles which you mentioned were the sleep one. We, the mm -hmm. tendency to getting into sleep and the causes could be overworking or getting less sleep. So in the same direction, is there a recommended time when to do this meditation? According to our scriptures, Brahma Muhurta early morning is the ideal time. The person who has to get up at 3.30, 4 o'clock meditation, um, they have to sleep at 8 o'clock. It is not possible for a modern world, hmm. for a person who is in this world. The 3.30 getting up, uh, a person who is totally dedicated his life committed to spiritual sadhana, no other job, no other work at all, no responsibilities, only sadhana. Mm -hmm. Sadhaka, he can go to early to bed, early to wake up, 3.30 days, second start, they should feel fresh. That is ideal. If not, suppose, you can get up at 5 o'clock. When you feel fresh time, that is, 5 o'clock is also okay. If not possible, 6 o'clock also, okay. According to, depend upon your work, hmm. field of your work, or 8 o'clock is also okay, or when your mind is available. That is ideal. Right. And before we start the first type of meditation, uh, one thing you mentioned was that sometimes people mistake the objective of meditation. So the Rasa and Swada comes in. So could you just summarize once again as to the objective of this effort which people are putting and they should put in? Or should they know that this is why they are doing it? Uh, Rasa Swada is different from the object of meditation. Rasa Swada means uh, enjoying the happiness in that meditation. Mm -hmm. Thinking that happiness is the purpose of meditation. That is Rasaswada. They want to continue in that. They don't want to lose it. Mm. That is Rasaswada obstacle. The object of meditation must be very clear. What for I am doing meditation? This object is Ishvara um, upon whom I am meditating upon. He is omniscient, Sarvagnya, all knower, competent enough to remove my all miseries, my weaknesses. Because the mind has got a lot of weaknesses, guilt, hurt feelings, worrying about the past. Guilt, hurt will be there about past, worry about future, hmm. and anxiety about uh, Vartamana, present life. These are all because of not leaning upon the God. Lean upon God. Surrender to God. Therefore, the object of meditation, total surrender is required. That is why Patanjali said, Ishwara Pranidhanam. In Niyamas, last step is Ishwara Pranidhanam. You have to surrender to the feet, lotus feet of Bhagavan, whom you like. 
Ji. So let's start with the first meditation. Okay. Now, Chitta Shanti Dhyanam Relaxation Meditation is the first meditation. Now, position is ready. Person is uh, committed to do meditation. Hmm. I am going to do meditation upon my Ishta Devata. I'm, before going to uh, objectify the object of meditation, I had to prepare my body, breathing, and mind. I had to make my mind calm. Chitta means mind. Shanti means calming down, relaxation. To relax the mind, body must relax first. Without relaxing body, mind cannot be relaxed. Body relaxation, we have to do number one in Chitta Shanti Dhyanam. There are three steps. Body relaxation first. Second one is uh, breathing relaxation. Third one is mind relaxation. So mind relaxation, before that you have to do two steps. In third step only, mind relaxation, you give auto suggestion. So the first step, uh, Chitta Shanti Dhyanam, physical body relaxation, how to do? After sitting in a comfortable posture, normally meditation posture, hands, asana position can be either Siddhasana or Swastikasana or Sukhasana or Padmasana or Vajrasana. Whatever position convenient, they can sit in that position. After sitting, that body must be straight, neck, body, head in one line. Having to take in that position, the hands position, people have different uh, ways of keeping hands like this. So they keep uh, some people, some people keep like this, some people keep like this. But I recommend uh, folding the hands like this, keeping on the lap, leaving the hands both after interlocking your fingers, leaving the, both the hands together on your lap. This is the ideal position of hands I recommend because there is a logic behind this. Whether other people accept it or not, my perception towards meditation, when you go into deep meditation, you lose your body awareness. You don't have any control on your body. You are leaving the body. How can you keep like this? There is effort is required. Thumb and forefinger has to join means there is effort. In sleep, can you keep like this? You cannot keep. Why? You have lost your control on the body. Automatically, it becomes like this. No, automatically. Like that, when you go to meditation also, it is a sleepless sleep-like. We are not sleeping. But the body is totally relaxed. You have no any control on your body. It is just relaxing totally. You are leaving the body as it is. That is why this is not uh, uh, ideal. I never recommend, but you see everybody, yoga means they sit like this, you know, hands keeping on the thighs. Simple logic. Now, after keeping the hands like this position, we have to close our eyes. After closing eyes, part by part relaxation. How we have to do body relaxation? Part by part. Each part of the body, from toe to head, I have to visualize each part of the body. How I can uh, relax uh, toes, one, one toe, relax, relax. I have to visualize that part. Big toe, second toe, third toe fourth toe, fifth toe, like that. Ten toes I have to visualize. Afterwards, relax ankles, relax cough muscles, relax. Like this is my inner suggestion myself. Visualize the part and it is uh, relaxed. Leaving that part, any stiffness is there. I have to feel that uh, is going out, stiffness. Then relaxing your 
uh, knees, thighs, lower abdomen, upper abdomen, very slowly. I am turning a little faster. So very, very slow. Each part I have to visualize and uh, I move to the other part, means that part before previous part must be totally relaxed. Then I come to the hands, fingers, palms, relax, and wrist joint, relax, elbows, relax, shoulders, relax, neck part, relax. Each part of my mind is rotating through those parts. Whereas where I am going to that part, my mind visualizes that part and say that it is relaxed. <clears throat> like that when you come to the face also, the face also lips relax, chin relax, cheeks relax, eyebrows, eyelashes, ears, nose, forehead, top of the head, like that. It takes a minimum 10 minutes in the beginning. 10 to 15 minutes also it may take in the beginning. Like this body part by part relaxation gradually have to come. By that time when you come to the top of the head, what is the sign of relaxation? Your body is relaxed or not? How do we know? You can know. You forget your body. That is the sign of relaxation. I lose my body awareness. I forget my body totally. That is the sign of relaxation of the body. You don't feel any stiffness anywhere. Completely relaxed. That is the fit body for meditation. Therefore, meditation to objectify the uh, object of meditation to do dhyanam, body must allow me, my mind to meditate upon. My body must allow. That is why I said asana siddhi. Mastery on one's own body, physical body. Then only real meditation starts. So this is about a body relaxation. Okay. Now let us go to the next step. Do you have any questions regarding this? No. No. So second um, step is breathing. Because between body and mind, prana is there. Body is called annamaya kosha. We call it as uh, physical sheep. Annamai kosha and manomai kosha mind. I am going to activate the mind is main uh, important uh, player in the meditation. It is playing an important role. So before going to that meditation, my body I have prepared now. Now what about breathing pranayama? Prana is the bridge like. Prana bandhana the liyate manaha. So I channelize my breathing. This is called prana vikshanam. Observing my own breathing. Inhale, breathing. Exhale, breathe out. As I inhale, as I exhale, I am watching my breath. It is called vikshanam. Prana means breathing. Vikshanam means observation. Prana vikshanam. Normal, simple. Rhythmic breathing as you are doing, slow breathing, rhythmic breathing without any jerks. You focus your mind on that. Then breathing becomes very slow, very deep and you don't feel that you are breathing. No sound should come out. So it happens slowly, very smoothly, deeply. And uh, as you observe your breathing, the body you forget, your breathing also you forget later when you come to a mind level. And your shasa, that awareness you drop. A shasa means breathing is growing on, but you are not aware of that. Prana vikshna time only you are aware of that. After doing few minutes, then you go to the third step, that mental level. Mind, Manomaya Kosha. So now you have forgotten your body. Breathing is also is going on smoothly. You are not aware of your breathing. Now you are aware of what? Mind. This mind, 
I have to do auto suggestion. These are all steps are in only Chitta Shanti Dhyan. Now, what auto suggestion I have to give? How to relax the mind? We don't have a separate mind for meditation. I can wear that mind and do meditation. The next after meditation, I can take another mind and do other work. No, we don't have like that. Like a bathroom chapel, outside chapel, you cannot have such a no, choice. Same mind, what mind do you are with that interacting with the world? Same mind you have to make use of in meditation also. That is why a meditator must avoid unnecessary debates and arguments in routine and day to day activities, day to day life. A meditator should not argue, debate too much, hot discussions with others. That uh, type of uh, uh, my arguments will disturb in the mind. So this is called auto suggestion. I should maintain my lifestyle from morning to till night. Also, other timings, I should not uh, react too much with the people. Anxiety, tension, and stress that uh, should not be there. I have to be aware of that. <clears throat> this is one point regarding auto suggestion. Later, I have to see that uh, Shanti comes only when I understand I am only a part of this creation. I am not the owner of anything in this world. Bhagavan has given me this body. Everything Bhagavan has given. I am only making use of them, everything given by Bhagavan. Nothing belongs to me. I am not the possessor of anything. So I release burden from my mind. I possess this, that and all. Uh, that type of identity, individuality. Too much individuality, too much identity with the body, with the possessions, all will disturb the mind, especially in the meditation time. Therefore, the viveka, the person has to develop viveka. What viveka? Nothing belongs to me actually. Everything belongs to Bhagavan. Why I have to command and demand? There is no need of demanding and commanding. Let me be a humble, simple human being in this world. Like an innocent child. What a child demands? Baby doesn't demand anything. Enjoys whatever is given by mother, by God. Whatever given to that, enjoys. That is why meditator must be a simple, humble devotee of the Lord. That type of mindset is there. This is also an auto suggestion. My relation is primary relation with Bhagavan. If I don't have this relation with primary relation with Bhagavan, I relate to myself with my husband or wife or children or with other relation friend, even in sitting meditation also. These relations are all secondary. They are all not primary. We need not go up to Vedanta. Simple, simple understanding here. Viveka. How any relation before birth, after birth only parents, brothers, sister, any relation. Why to bother too much about relation? Why to disturb my mind? Because of their too much love also, I am attached to them. If they don't show love also, I am disturbed by that. Because of that emotional attachment with the other relations in the world, people are hooked to that. And uh, hooked to that and complaining, my mind is disturbed. Your mind is not disturbed. People are not holding on to you. You are holding to the people, relations. They are not holding to you. We are always complaining. No? They are attached to me. They are attached to you. Nobody is attached to you. You are attached to everyone. We are thinking, everybody is looking at me, nobody is looking at you. They don't have time to look at you also. Everybody is looking at themselves only. 
This is misconceptions. So, lot of misconceptions we have to drop. Conditioning, strong likes and dislikes, all these I have to reduce. Totally, I'm not able to come out of them, at least drastically, slowly, gradually. If I come out of that by auto suggestion, no, I'm a meditator. I'm sitting in meditation. I'm committed to this practice. This is the best meditation what I'm doing. I surrender to God first. I surrender to my Guru. I seek the blessings of my parents, my Guru, Ishvara. Like that, mind has to go. Preparation. This is called preparation. Preparing the mind. Without preparation, but cooking, how much they are preparing? After preparation only, they start cooking. Hmm. Just like that, it won't come. Anything, we have to prepare first. Ground preparation. Body preparation, breathing preparation, mind preparation. After this much preparation, there is a possibility of mind relaxation. There is a possibility. And as you sit in meditation, you come to know what are all difficulties are there, what are all thoughts are coming, what emotions are disturbing you, then how to handle. At that time only you come to know how to handle. We do not know what thought arise in the mind. Arrival of thoughts, we don't have control. But after arrival, I have choice, willpower, how to continue that thing, thought or not. It is my choice. But uh, unfortunately, people complain, I am getting this thought, that thought, unwanted, negative thoughts, unhealthy thoughts, I don't like it. You don't have control at their arrival. What thought is going to come, nobody knows. But when they arrive, it is your, your willpower, your effort you have to use. Shubha Shubhabhya Margabhyam Vahanti Vasana Sarit. Uh, auspicious good thoughts and bad thoughts. What you are thinking bad thoughts, disturbing thoughts. Ashubha means inauspicious. And thoughts are also coming. Vahanti, they are flowing. Both are there in the mind. With prayatnena, paurushena prayatnena, with purusha prayatna, with your own effort, you have to do yojaniya shubhepati. All negative thoughts you have to replace by positive thoughts. Unhealthy thoughts you have to replace by healthy thoughts. Godly thoughts, spiritual thoughts, friendly thoughts, loving thoughts. All these thoughts you have to develop. Then your mind gets relaxed. This is like a tug of war, actually. Mm. A lot of uh, um, strain will be there in the beginning. The moment you start doing slowly with understanding, proper understanding, meditation is meant uh, finally to know the reality, to know the truth. Meditation is a small step in the practice life. It is not ultimate. Meditation is meant to know the reality later. You are preparing the mind now. Until you know the reality, the truth of this universe, the truth of your individual, hmm. you cannot have any complete satisfaction through the Arananda. Only Jnanam, finally. For that Jnanam, you are now preparing the mind. Without this type of mind, Manasai Veda Maptavyam. Yamadharma Raja has said, Yen Manasa Namunate. You cannot know the truth through the mind. One statement of Upanishad. Same Upanishad says, another place, Manasai Veda Maptavyam. Through mind only you can know. Hmm. Both are contradictory. One place you cannot know through the mind. One place it says you can know through the mind. What it means? You cannot know through that mind which is unhealthy, which is not having any values, which is not disciplined, which is not having any uh, relaxation or contentment. It is not there. That mind cannot know. What type of mind can know? A mind which is content, 
which is following values, which is having a lot of clarity, which is having humble, simple, uh, such a mind, beautiful mind. If you have wonderful, through mind only you can know. And finally you understand mind is mithya, later. Mm-hmm. But same mind is the tool. Therefore, meditation gives, the purpose of meditation is this point, preparing you to know the ultimate reality by knowing which you understand you are the substratum of this universe. That is called Purnatma. This meditation is a preparation. But here itself you have a break where you can get the truth. That's why body is a means. That's what Dharma Raja said to Nachiketas. Atmanam Rathinam Vithi, Shariram Rathamevatu, Buddhintu Sarathim Vithi. Come body compared to a chariot. Sense organs, horses, minders, you know, the train, everything beautiful imagery given in that. So these are all given in our Shastra. Lot of practices are mentioned, food habits, how to maintain your mind, day-to-day actions. Ashtanga Yoga, Yamaniyamas are the best. If you study Ashtanga Yoga, Yamaniyamas thoroughly, you are simple. Practice is simple. So this is about uh, Chitta Shanti Dhyana. Therefore, physical body relaxation, then Prana Vikshanam, then auto-suggestion with the proper understanding, commitment, and uh, Love what you are doing. Love yourself. This is the meditation I am doing. That love must be there. Then you can succeed in your practice. A, a couple of questions, Swamiji. So you have explained it completely. I actually don't have any uh, uh, confusions in, in this. But just a couple of them. One is when when we move so we have relaxed the body and we went to our breath. And at that point, if we again start feeling some anxiety in the body, some pain somewhere, some unrelaxation, should we come back to our body relaxation stage and yes, get it? Yes, yes, definitely. And the other thing which you mentioned is, I think I'm, I'm just underlining that part, what you said that this is almost like a lifestyle change. We can't yes. expect that in the daytime we do something else and in, in that one hour, half an hour, we can immediately switch it to a meditative stage. True. Correct. So everybody who's on this path, they have to also relook at what they're doing in their lifestyle, how they're working in their relationships, what are the thoughts which are accompanying them in the daytime. Yes. After uh, this Chitta Shanti Dhyanam, next uh, class, next uh, se- session, we will go to that Chitta Ekagrata Dhyan. Okay. So, uh, that Ekagrata, there is an effort. There it begins the uh, Dharana, it is called Dharana. So, as Patanjali said, um, Dharana means focusing effort is required. So, when you go to the next, uh, one quite opposite to the Khan and this relaxation meditation. Because body is relaxed mm. and uh, breathing is relaxed, mind is relaxed. So you are going to focus your mind. There comes the puja, um, parayanam, lot of things comes there in concentration meditation. Exactly object of meditation there starts. That is also a preparatory step only. So these are all the uh, steps uh, I would like to mention. Any more other points you would like to know, you can ask me regarding food. Uh, so that is the most toughest part for everyone. Our Shastra says, Jite Rasam Jite Sarvam. If you have control your tongue, you can control all your sense organs. Control the world also, sarvam. Tongue, talking tongue, eating tongue. This is highly, highly 
um, explained, very much elaborately explained in our Shastra. They have never left this part of food. I have given talks on food itself for two hours, only one food topic. So your health, suppose if you don't take sattvic healthy food, body cannot be healthy. Healthy body is not there, mind cannot cooperate in meditation. Suppose you take rajasic food, tamasic food, it irritates the stomach. Hmm. Lot of irritants will be there. And one more thing, moderate. Suppose you want to eat the sattvic food to two extremities, we should not go. Ati sarvatra varjayet. Too much, any time, anything to be avoided. Food also, some people go too much of food. Anything too much they do. In the food control, as meditation also. This meditation, how much time we have to do in the beginning? I have to tell that. First, beginning time, 20 minutes we can do this relaxation meditation. 20 minutes means first five minutes uh, body relaxation. Next five minutes uh, breathing relaxation. Next five minutes auto suggestion. Mm, then 15 minutes over. Again, come back to body relaxation. And you come to body relaxation, how it is relaxed. So by that time, uh, you understand how to relax. This itself you have to do for a month, minimum. A month they practice, suppose every day, they can master in this relaxation. Or they can do 15 days. Suppose they are not able to relax easily. Some people can relax easily because of their nature, mind nature. A restless mind people takes time. Calm mind people already calm their heart a little bit. Very fast they can come to relaxation. It depends person to person, it differs. But if you do long time for one month or 15 days minimum, for many people, 15 months also not sufficient. Mm. This itself takes time. But people are not having that much patience. I want to complete next meditation, next meditation. That is not ideal. Let me master this first. Once I master this, the next uh, uh, step of meditation is simple for me. Hurriedly, if I go to the next meditation, the, because people know, they want to know everything at a time. That type of crazy is not good, actually. That's why patience is required. A lot of tolerance is required. Wait and see, wait and see. That is very important. So this is a very simple Chitta Shanti Dhyanam explanation. But concentration, when I come to that, I need a lot of it things to explain uh, because uh, steps to be more um, to be clarified in that this is very simple so but time must be 20 minutes suppose if you go to second meditation first meditation also and start and second meditation then i'll give the time duration how much time you have to that part i will mention when i go to second meditation but first meditation 20 minutes minimum you can divide five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, come back again to relaxation. And uh, suddenly you should not get up from the meditation slowly like a bird. See, all animals, birds, naturally they live. Bird from its nest it comes onto the branch and sit there and it won't fly immediately. It moves its right wing, left wing and uh, cleans its body. And looking this side and that side for some time again, closing eyes uh, like that, slowly it uh, comes out. Like that, uh, when we wake up, also relaxly we have to wake up. And may, from meditation, also when I come out of meditation, also first stretch your legs, uh, relax your body, twist your body, move your neck front and back, and make that same serene calmness. Uh, Throughout your actions. That is called doing actions without any reactions. Mm. Showing attention without any tension. Let me maintain the same 
attention how I have shown in my meditation. Let me show the same attention in my activities. Why to have tension? Therefore, remove the word tension from your dictionary. And uh, don't make use of that word tension. Other people also. Are you tensed? Anna? Don't use for others also. Don't use tension for your sake also. And uh, reaction, problem. It is a problem. I have no problem. This problem word also not advisable to use. People very commonly they use. Can I come? Can I sit here? No problem. Why to use problem there? Very casually we are using problem word. It is not required. It is a modern casual usage that is problem. Problem is not at all required that word. So, reducing the words of problem and tension, remove from our dictionary as much as possible. By uh, mistake, it comes also again, correct yourself. No, next time I should not use because of mannerism. No, habitual <laughs> habits are there, it won't go. Habit like H you remove, Swamiji says, a bit remains. If you remove a bit remains. If you remove the, it remains. What is an habit? Like that. So I'll practice. Abhyas. See, uh, Swamiji, one quick question on food. Uh, is there a guidance as to when we should eat? What time? Yes, what time? yes, yes. When you feel hungry, you eat. Mm -hmm. All maximum problems in the world, you know, present kind of world is facing is overeat. Everyone eat too much more than what they require. That is why there is a shloka. There is a talk by me in my spiritual uh, yoga for spiritual health. In that talk, the two hours talk is there available. There are a lot of, if you want about food, I will take another session for that, especially. There are a lot of shlokas, a lot of guidance. My favorite topic that is food. <laughs> hmm? how it is very useful for the sadhkas. We will see a separate topic that. Hmm? Sure. That is very nice. Very important also. Thank you, Swamiji. Again, this has been a such a nice one-hour session. It actually doesn't feel one-hour. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. But thanks again, and we'll meet again in the next session when we take up the next meditation. Shant, 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 Shant,